Okay. I am going to tell you that some of you will love this episode and some of you are going to get a little uncomfortable and it's okay because when we get uncomfortable, we have an opportunity to grow. And what I want to really unpack with you today is how we bounce back from bad experiences or challenges or conflict or pain. And um, I'm inspired to share this with you today because I've been working on a course on leadership that I will be teaching and you'll have um, information coming to you about that real soon as, as a matter of fact. And so in preparing and writing the course and uh, doing some more research on leadership, I, of course, have, have gone to one of my favorite sources on leadership, which is John Maxwell. And John Maxwell is an internationally known speaker, coach. He's a pastor. He's written probably now close to 80 books, mostly on leadership. And one of the books that I go to a lot because it's just easy to understand. It's kind of in your face with both a little care and candor on some ways to really grow as a person. And so I'm going to share some thoughts with you and want to give credit to John. And I'm going to be talking to you about one particular chapter, actually, that inspired this podcast from this book. So the book is John Maxwell's 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And I'm going to probably refer to chapter eight, which he calls the law of pain. And basically, it's understanding how we respond to bad experiences. And for us to understand that life is always going to challenge us, right? We're going to have things that don't always work out. We're going to deal with pain or adversity on a lot of levels. And I think this is such an important conversation because when we take a, a step back to understand how we respond to bad experiences, we can understand a lot more about ourselves because through that, it's where we show up. And I think that every time we encounter a painful experience, we get to know ourselves a little bit better. We get to connect more with the tools in our toolbox. And I think that pain, and we're going to talk about what pain is, right? Because pain can show up in a lot of ways, but pain prompts us to really, I think, face who we are and face what we're capable of. And I think pain also gives us an opportunity to grow to another level. So when things happen that are out of our control, uh, whether it's on a personal level or on a professional level, I know from experience, because I've been there too, right? I know how that can throw us off. And I know how many of us respond very differently. And I think the first opportunity is to think about how do I normally respond to pain, right? Do I shut down? Do I get angry? Do I get overwhelmed? Am I overly emotional? Do I just jump into action? We all have a different response and certainly different circumstances might have us respond differently too. But I think that's the first thing to ask ourselves, nor what do I normally do when something happens that is really challenging or painful? What separates people who thrive from those who mer merely survive? I believe it's how they face their problems. I think that every time we experience something challenging, how we choose to respond to it is how we're shaping our character, how we're shaping our uh, problem solving skills, how we're shaping our emotional responses to things. So I think this is such an important conversation, right? Because when we can teach ourselves how to adjust our response, I think it creates a lot more choices for us and it gives us a lot more opportunity to face adversity, right? So look, I started this conversation with some of you are going to be like, oh, this is so important and, and, and others might be a little uncomfortable. And I said, that's okay, because when we get uncomfortable, I think it's revealing something to us, right? There's some truth in what is being said, or there's some truth in the situation that we need to look at. And so I just want to go through a couple of things I think all of us could benefit from when it comes to understanding bad experiences or pain, because Again, life is wonderful. It's beautiful. There's so many opportunities. I talk a lot on this podcast about mindset. And I know that you're here. You're listening to this because you are 
an, someone else who believes in living a big life and who can understand that the way we think shapes our reality. Yet we're all human, and that means that we're going to have some days where we're off. We're going to have some uh, situations come up that are gonna really push us to the limit. And and listen, our initial reaction might not be so positive. And, and I just wanna normalize that for all of us. It's okay. And though, we do need to then decide what comes next. And so I think in doing so, if we could understand a few things about bad experiences, right? Number one, everyone has them. I've had them, you've had them, we may still have them. And I think it's important for us to just acknowledge life can be unpredictable and life has its ups and downs, right? So everyone is dealing with pain or challenge or adversity or a bad experience at some time in their life. It's just inevitable, right? And I think that, again, it's how we choose to respond to those situations that make all the difference. The second thing that I know is true about bad experiences, and John talks about it in, in his book, is that no one really likes them, <laughs> really. Let's get serious, guys. Nobody is going to say, oh, I'm excited for this challenge. I'm excited that life just gave me a curveball. I'm thrilled that the rug just got ripped out from underneath me. No way. Yet, we have to appreciate the lessons we might receive from it, but it may not happen till like later down the road when we're over it. So I think we have to just get real and say, nobody likes this, right? No one, especially when you're in the middle of it. And if anyone right now listening to this is in the middle of a tough time, is in the middle of a painful experience, just know I'm sending you lots of love and all of us are sending a lot of supportive energy. Um, and I understand that it's painful. Um, but I also believe that we can move past this because we don't have to be labeled or become a victim of our circumstances. There's always another option. I think another thing we have to understand about pain is that we have a choice. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't take advantage of this, but I believe that we can make something positive out of any bad experience. And we've seen this, we've heard the stories of people who have risen to incredible personal triumphs or have gone on to do amazing things for the world based on some tragic loss or painful experience that they've had. And so I think we have to hold on to some optimism that at some point, life's difficulties don't have to allow you to stay the same. That any challenge, any painful experience will change you. And so we have this growth opportunity. And when we have bad experiences, how can we become better for it? So when tough times come in, as I said, the way we respond to that situation is going to determine a lot of our outcome. So where do you want to be on the other side of it? Who do you want to be after that experience? So I think that one of the things John talks about in this chapter is that pain is part of growth. We've heard it, right? Growing pains. And um, all things that are growing experience some period of adjustment, some period of discomfort, some pain. In accepting that, I think we can be better prepared to deal with that. Like I said, pain shows up in a lot of ways and everyone has pain, right? There can be the pain of an experience, right? We've all been there where we started a new job, we started um, a new position within our company and there's a learning curve, right? And there's inexperience that shows up and, and creates a gap. And so that can be painful or there's the pain of feeling a little incompetent at times, whether or not that incompetence is real or perceived in your own mind, it's still painful, right? There's the pain of disappointment. We've all experienced when something or someone has let us down when something didn't turn out the way we thought, that can be extremely painful. And then there's the pain of conflict, the pain of change, right? Many of us feel that change is tough and I get that. Personally, I am wired. I love change. I think that change is always gonna bring new growth and opportunity. And if I don't find that change is happening fast enough, I'll find ways to create it. And yet I realize that I'm a small percentage of the population that for most people, 
change is uncomfortable and I want to hold space for people, especially in my organization or in people that I coach or consult. We have to understand that for some people, change is tough. And look, we can go through a whole list of things that are painful, right? Making some hard decisions can be painful. Experiencing a financial loss is very painful. Relationship loss, right? But I think that we then have to acknowledge and get back into what I've said already to you in the top of this uh, episode is how can we turn your pain into gain? How can you equip yourself to use the adversity, to use the pain, to use the change, to get moving forward in a bigger and more positive way. I want to leave you with a couple of, I guess, tips on how to do that. Now, listen, as I've said to you so many times, the way you think creates your reality. Could we program our thoughts, right? When we experience pain, when we experience adversity, could we program our thoughts to create a mantra or maybe a a positive stance And what I want to say about that is, listen, this is not the secret remedy that's going to change everything, just saying something positive, but it does begin a process of conditioning your thinking. And when you start to condition, your thinking creates opportunity for you, right? It starts to allow you to think more logically and less emotionally. So I just want to say what I'm saying to you right now feels, I don't know, is that really going to work? Try it. So what I'm saying is, If you were to create a statement or an affirmation, something based in reality that you can start to use to reprogram your thoughts, could that start to change how you see things, right? So a couple of examples could be life is full of good and bad, right? Just being real, life is full of good and bad. There are things in my life that are good and there are things in my life I can't control. Being able to resolve ourselves to that. If I make good choices, I trust myself or I trust myself to make good choices. I like that better. I trust myself to make good choices. Listen, if we have a negative filter on our thinking, then we're not going to see possibility. And it's interesting because I think people understand that and accept that so much easier. When I say to you that if your thinking is negative, you're going to put a filter on everything and suddenly everything feels negative, right? It feels like you suddenly feel like you can't figure it out. Yet, if that is true, why would it you putting a more positive stance on your thinking do the opposite for you, right? So try that. Create an affirmation. Create a reality-based statement. Something that balances logic and emotion for you. That's a great way to move out of those cycles of thinking that we find ourselves in where we're just ruminating in negativity, right? If we can embrace some of the bad experiences that are happening in our lives and we figure out ways to bounce back from that, could we also then help other people do the same? And it doesn't mean that you're going to sit down and necessarily have a consulting conversation, but I think we can show people a lot through our own strength. We can teach people a lot about themselves when they're able to see how we respond to things. So listen, nothing can be changed until we face it. Nothing can be changed until we face it. When something happens in our life that is challenging or a bad experience, we really have to understand that we have to face it and we have to deal with it. And we might need help dealing with it. It might be important for us to gain support from a coach or a therapist And that's important too. So we have to understand though, that this is an opportunity. And it's just understanding that we take responsibility for our lives every day, right? Recognizing the circumstances that are in our control and what are are not in our control. And if we can understand that we have much more power to change things than we want to believe, then we can take back that power And we can start to be more in the driver's seat of our own lives. I just want to say, no matter what you've gone through in your life, and I've been through a lot too, guys, no matter what you might be going through right now, you are loved and you are supported and you have an opportunity to grow from this. You might not see it at the moment, but it's important that you have that hope and that optimism 
I know it is sometimes really difficult to see opportunity when you're in the middle of it. And it's just understanding that as you navigate, as you make decisions and choices in the painful moment, that you understand that you can move past this and bring with you a lot of learning, bring with you a lot of choices about what to do in the future, uh, how to respond to more adversity. And I believe that you have the ability to figure things out. And if you need that support and that help to seek it. So I appreciate you all so much. I love you. And I thank you for being here every week. And again, I just want to say I'm here as your friend and I'm here as someone who wants to share great ideas with you. I am not a therapist and I'm not really your coach, but I am here to provide you with some entertainment and education along the way. And if you are in a situation where you really require professional help, please seek it. Please go out and get the support that you need because you're worth it. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you next time.